In this video, I'm going to introduce the hidden gem mods that I've chosen after much consideration while recently modding Fallout 4. From gameplay to buildings, I was able to significantly upgrade my mod list by selecting a variety of mods. I'm really happy to be able to share this information with you all. First, in terms of gameplay, there's the player comments and head tracking mod. This mod allows you your character to speak two? outside huh? of dialogue scenes. It includes many more features, including combat taunts, player greetings, responses to NPCs, and player head tracking. During gameplay, Nora has many conversations sorry, in various I situations, which added more time. excitement to the yes. game. And I'll just take this. The next mod is Stimpak's Heal No Limbs. This mod maintains the percentage-based health recovery function of Stimpax, but removes the limb healing effect. Instead, it allows for the use of the Better Chems mod in conjunction with MedX to heal limbs, providing a complementary effect. By limiting the function of Stimpax and instead increasing the importance of MedX, which I usually don't use, I've made it possible to heal the character more strategically. And you just saw a Stimpak in a video, and the Stimpak mod I'm currently using is the Russian Stimpak. It's a mod that most people familiar with the game would know. To explain it once more, this mod changes the original Stimpak to a Russian style, including an animation for using the Stimpak in first-person perspective. However, please note that it does not apply in third-person perspective, which is a drawback. You can choose from various colors. And for your reference, I'm using the green one. Next up is Shield Tactics, a mod that adds a feature allowing the player to take cover behind a companion equipped with a shield or power armor. What's impressive about this mod is that it doesn't just have followers attacking alongside the player, but it also enables them to defend. Particularly when used in conjunction with Uneducated Shooter, it allows for tactical gameplay where the player can hide behind a shield-bearing follower peek out from either side, and fire at enemies. This mod truly enhances the strategic depth of the game. Next up is the Fallout Kill Cam. Despite a few minor bugs, the addition of a cinematic slow motion camera during enemy takedowns seems to be a significant feature. In my recent playthrough, I incorporated this mod to enhance the cinematic slow motion effects during combat. This allowed me to experience more dynamic battles. Next up is the Disable Companion Collision mod. This mod deactivates the collision between the player and their companions, allowing the player to pass through without being obstructed by followers blocking building entrances. One of the significant advantages of this mod is that it allows each function to be toggled on and off through the mod configuration menu. It offers various settings, such as activating only when the player's weapon is drawn or only when the player is in combat, making it quite convenient to adventure with companions. This time we're going to talk about mods related to creatures. Recently, I introduced the Forced Evolution, Super Mutant Add-ons mod through this channel. This mod adds new enemies to the Super Mutant faction, diversifying the mutants while making them look more unique and powerful. There are mutants that self-destruct by launching mini nuclear bombs, mutant rats, and other mutants with large bodies, making battles with them more tense and exciting. Next up is Unique Raider Gangs and Patrols. This mod introduces four completely new Raider Gangs, unique patrol patterns, and over 40 new armors. I've introduced this mod in more detail in the video at the top left. The four new gangs each have their own unique patrol patterns, so you'll occasionally run into them during your adventures. In particular, the Legion organization, which wears medieval spears or armor, was especially impressive. Initially, I tried to modernize the raiders, but through this mod, I was able to increase the diversity of the raiders and inject vitality into the game. So, I upgraded the raiders to be more distinctive and diverse through this mod. Next up is the FGEP Feral Ghouls Expansion Pack, the definitive edition. This mod introduces new and terrifying archetypes to the Feral Ghoul faction. It diversifies the Feral Ghouls, offering alternatives to the often seen bloated and gangrenous at higher levels. From unique forms of prey with new abilities to creatures with entirely new capabilities, it will appeal to nearly all playstyles. 
These ghouls possess unique sounds, models, and textures. This mod is well received by users and is known for its significant improvements to the ghouls. I've been using it myself and have been satisfied with the enhancements it brings to the ghouls so far. This time, I've improved my mod list by installing several location enhancement mods, and I'd like to introduce those mods to you. First up is Fem Shepping's Diamond City Edit. This mod improves both the interior and exterior areas of Diamond City by adding trees, plants, buildings, and various decorations, making Diamond City more beautiful. The entrance to Diamond City is also enhanced with various trees, flag decorations, and ornaments, making it more beautiful. However, please be aware that the addition of these architectures may cause a decrease in frame rate. Next up is Immersive and Extended Lexington. This mod enhances and expands the Lexington area in the Fallout 4 game. It adds more details and buildings to Lexington, making it feel like a true city. The mod introduces new houses and buildings to Lexington, changes existing houses and raider locations, and increases the ghoul population, giving Lexington a military presence and a sense of isolation. This will appeal to users who were disappointed with the overall size and feel of Lexington. The creator was inspired by the Walking Dead series when creating this mod, and you too will see Lexington transform into a larger and more vibrant city through this mod. This will provide users with a richer and more immersive gaming experience. Next up is Conquered Revised. This mod is for Fallout 4, and it expands and modifies the interiors of the Conquered area. It edits and restructures the interiors of Conquered, creating mini legends, routes, and more opportunities to defeat enemies. In addition to the museum, interior spaces such as the Colonial Hotel and Conquered Meeting Hall have been added, allowing you to enter and explore many buildings that were previously just decorations. Inside, there are a considerable number of raiders, so you may have to battle them. Various elements have been added to stimulate your sense of adventure, making it an excellent mod in my opinion. Next up is I've Got Wood 2, the Sanctuary Texture Redux. This mod thoroughly transforms the Sanctuary Texture set and the furniture within the player's home. The main goal of this mod is to add comfort and luxury to the player's home, with textures significantly improved to be more appealing and suitable for settlement mods. Additionally, the textures are less affected by weather than the original player home texture set, enhancing the visual appeal of your sanctuary. Each asset is a replacement, altering the vanilla version to add more comfort and luxury to the sanctuary area. Thank you so much for watching the video until the end. Today's video was not about the latest mods, but rather about hidden gem mods that I personally prefer. I sincerely hope that these mods will help upgrade your mod list to the next level. Your subscriptions, likes, and generous support greatly contribute to the growth of the channel. Until the next video, I hope you enjoy your wonderful modding experience and journey through the Commonwealth.